just for a day our queen and king would visit all the islands and saw everything how would they feel about the changes of our land can you just imagine if they were around and saw highways on a sacred ground how would they feel about this modern city life tears would come from each other's eyes as they would stop to realize our people are in great great danger If they come back and saw traffic lights and railroad tracks, how would they feel about this modern city life? Tears would come from each other's eyes as they would stop to realize that our land is in great, great danger now. Thank you for attending my TED talk. We are done with class. Just joking. Okay, so what happens is let me put cousin back. Okay, so what happens is can you hear me? Yeah, okay, good. So 
as as this is going on, this is what I had written, right? So you kaika na leo o kavakahiko, the call of the ones that came before reverberates, overseeing us wander through our lives, searching for the connection to the aina, when the aina is for sale for a bargain price to Malahini. How do we become kia'i of the timeline when Olelo Hawaii is an elective course in Nakula? How do we become kia'i of the mo'olelo, of the past, of the present, of the future? Ku ha'aheo, lost no, nevermore. O kahi leo, imua e naopio, o keia kava i oni ai. Okay, so um, as you guys know, um, I had to just double check my Hawaiian. Um, my Hawaiian is like at such a basic level, like instead of imua in aopio, I wanted to just write hand in hand. So you know what that translates to, right? Where's my, um, where are you guys there? Where is Apule, right? So I just wanted to write hand in hand, right? Because it's metaphorically in English that makes sense. But in Hawaiian, it doesn't translate properly. So that's why it's always good to ask somebody who knows. Am I right? I mean, it just doesn't translate. So yeah, I had to ask for help a little bit, but that's okay. That's okay. Maintain, we're adding some words in there, right? Maintain, we're trying. So for this, like, you know, I'm listening to this song and I'm trying to, I'm wondering, right? I'm wondering why every single school in, um, in Hawaii don't have, they don't have a, a mandatory Olelo Hawaii class if you grow up here, right? If you go to school here, no more. They're elective classes, right? Um, interesting. Uh, Krisha, are you raising your hand or are you thinking? Yeah, I was trying to come in. Oh, shoot. Okay. So anyway, um, this is what I'm going to, I got to stop sharing my screen. Below, what I want you to do is you should have your um, responses typed in. Okay. But um, what I need you to do is this. How come I can't see her? Can you, did you text her? Can you text her to try and get back in again? Oh, wait, there. Yeah, she's, she, oh, where is it? The waiting room. Oh, there she is, Never mind. Okay, so before you, you, you hit post, okay? Just go ahead and finish up your last thought, okay? It does not have to be 14 lines, okay? Um, not at all, okay? So what you're gonna do, I'm gonna send the post into um, the chat, not the post, but the, Okay, and so in the chat, what I want you guys to do is this is your period for sign up um, for Voices of Wisdom, but we want to go below the chart, below that table, and this is what I'm going to have you do. So, um, like you're gonna, like for example, I'm gonna copy whatever I wrote, okay, and I'm going to just post it in there knowing, I mean, come on guys, knowing that, um, you know, this is just a draft. Okay. No, no worries there. Okay. Um, and so what you would do is hit the enter button and then go ahead, write your name and then post yours so that we can make a collective poem as a class. Okay. So you can go ahead and do that. If you want to change the font to make yours a little bit fancy, go ahead and make it a little bit fancy if you want. Okay, but, and then once you're done, you go ahead and post, um, you can go ahead and post um, your response poems in the, in the discussion board so that you can see what other kids um, also came up with. Okay, and then I'm gonna have a couple of you guys just talk about what you guys wrote. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Is it supposed to be formatted like a poem? Um, what you you can so where are you, Kai? Where did Kai go? Oh, there she there, Kai. Um, so it doesn't have to be formatted as a poem right now, but 
if you could just break it up into phrases and then hit the enter button, that would work. Okay. All righty. Anybody else? Nope. Hello, Miss Kyocho. So what we did was we uh, listened to Hawaii 78. Um, and then what we did was we just wrote whatever came to came to surface within us as we listened to the song. So you can go back and do this after. Um, okay. Um, and then we're just putting it into our period for sign out. Okay. Um, if anybody done this song? Nice. Very cool. Okay, are we done? Oh, hey. Do we have? No, Carson, I don't know. I mean, I think we know some vocabulary of Hawaiian if we're not really good at, you know, putting together Hawaiian sentences. But I mean, if you um, don't know any Hawaiian words, then no need. I mean, everybody's at a certain point, right? I mean, no judging, no judgment. Oh my gosh. Kaylee, you are my special one. Yes, you are. And I really appreciate you. I embrace you to the fullest, all the way to your bones. Okay, so um, what we did was we watched, this would have been a really fun activity for you, by the way. Um, we, we listened to Hawaii 78, we watched the video, and then we just typed out whatever we wanted, what we like, okay? What reactions, so you can do that later. Okay, very good. And then you're just gonna add it to the sign up down below. Okay, so, um, yeah. Before the, um, you know how we have to type it in Canvas? Yeah. We have to turn it in. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, you have to post like it so you can, in order to see everybody else's. But also, um, underneath the period for sign up, don't forget to put it, post it, like copy and paste it, so that we can have one giant like class poem. Okay. We have to. Why? I don't want to put it. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm not supposed to force it, my students to do that, but. Okay. But you're gonna post it on Canvas? I'll put it on top of this. It's thing. the same thing, oh my gosh, okay. Well, it's because it's a grade, I have to. Oh. There, okay. <laughs> I don't know what to say, a noise came out, that's what happened, okay. Let's see, um, ooh, okay, cool. Um, that was really something that caught my eye too. Ooh, let's see. La Akel, did you just type an O in there or something happened? I'm confused a little bit, but I'm editing my response. <laughs> Cause you know, you got like one O, I mean, I don't know in text, in the text world, is that just a mouth? You just make a waha. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot the assignment it was called poetic response. Oh, la okay. Okay, um, Miss Eva, something that caught my eye. Can you talk about like the last, like maybe 
I don't know. Uh, that last stanza that you wrote, it's pretty darn cool. Um, I, I don't know. Like, it just. Uh, well, one of the lines in the song talked about like, Actually, you know what? I can't even remember now that I think about it. Okay. Maybe just talk about your re reaction or response to that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I kind of wanted to just connect it to like our ancestors or something. Okay. Oh, you know, because they're constantly, they talk, they said something about like, um, uh, them constantly, or, <sighs> sorry. <laughs> how our um, life today is becoming modernized and how it's becoming dangerous and stuff mm. for the Hawaiian culture. So yeah. I kind of wanted to talk about our ancestors who just have to like watch through as it happens and can't really do anything about it. Yeah. Wow, yeah. I mean, could you imagine being in their shoes and like kind of like Greek gods and goddesses watching up on Mount Olympus, right? I mean, they're just watching going, oh my goodness. Sister can't even grow on kalo. Mm. In fact, she not even like eat kalo or oh, pudding, right? I mean, it's just kind of like she rather eat McDonald's. You know, it's just kind of like. But it's really interesting. Anybody notice the different instruments being used? Any anybody that that caught their eye? Like, can I purchase kalo chips from this? Oh my gosh, I can purchase kalo. Yes. Ate baras, please. Yeah. The violin, the, the electric piano, also known as a keyboard. <laughs> what is a shaky thing? What was that thing? That chuk -chuk? Be, oh. What was it? The, isn't that a maraca? The <laughs> I don't know. What are you talking about? Uli Uli? The Uli Uli? Oh, yeah. Like and there's like the, the egg, it what? It looks like a tube and the guy was just going like this. Oh, oh. yeah. Yeah. Kind of like Miss, a big... I'll use the bathroom. Please. Come on, man. Okay. So we have, we have like, a, it's kind of cool because they're, they're singing about, right? About the past and people from before now checking out i mean and and we're on earth going okay i hope i hope they're proud of us right i hope that we're doing the right things right uh, i hope i hope we can still hear them i don't know okay um quite interesting alicia go ahead and talk about your little response here wow Miss Kawazu, can I use the bathroom too? No. Why? You got to go at Blaze. I don't want to go at Blaze. I just uh. want to <laughs> You guys came late and then now you guys have to use the bathroom. I drink two bottles of water. That's I'm going to call you Mimi girl pretty soon. Okay, hurry up. All right. Where's Alicia? Can you please talk about this like you... You started repeating words, perpetuating unified knowledge. Um, so when we were watching the video, I thought we were supposed to take notes. Oh, so good. Take notes. But um, then you said make it a poem. And I wrote in my notes, I had, um, I forget what it was, Nohona, I think, with Kumo Kili'i. Yeah. And we had like a class about like the difference between state versus territory and the Kuwait stuff and my like whole life um my family is kind of against like sovereignty stuff right well, my brother also had that class so my brother and I are, are like for it and then my family is like shut up I'm, that is dumb so it's like important to me and that's what it's about discovering their truth the like second to last line because I feel like it's really important to know because like growing up I never really cared about it because I was like it it's a thing that happened and then right. I learned about it so now I'm like oh I care about it 
yeah, it's a thing that happened, right? Anybody else in that Nahona class? Nahona class? Nobody else? Huh, oh, interesting. Wow. How come, can, so can sophomores take Nahona? Yeah, you can take um, Nahona one. Oh, yeah. okay, cool. Right. Um, and even, um, I think it's Kumuhaya's class, the freshman class. Um, she's starting to share the articles of um, Kianu Sai that is talk that talks about um, the truth of the past. Um, if you guys don't know what we're talking about, then you you guys really need to find out for yourself. Almost, yeah. It's like it's like you need to find out for yourself because it's, it's a lot to wrap your brain around, like, because I took that course that you're talking about, not the Nahona, but, and um, I was like, what? They just said Hawaii was annexed by the United States and they agreed. Like, it's not, that's not what happened. That's what was written in the books. Like, that's what was written down as history. But what actually happened was, was not what, we generally know or what even our parents know and so yeah oh that must be a really interesting conversation like not even like maybe avoid <laughs> i don't know yeah it's usually um something comes up and then my dad is like would you have rather been overthrown by someone who doesn't give you freedom and then my brother and i are like okay we're done talking about this now ah yeah so very interesting. Yeah, I'm just waiting for everybody to finish posting because I only see that like four of you guys posted on your in the chat in the um, not the chat, but in the discussion board. So whatever you have at this point, make sure that you um, make sure that um, you guys post it and we're going to move on. So what I'm finding is when I have kids pull when I have kids actually do it, do like actually post something and then we move on when i go back to grade it it's not there for some reason okay so what i'm trying to do is hold you guys accountable for doing some of this work now okay so we I, it sounds like we need to make some adjustments here the first adjustment i want to make is that we're all here before class actually starts okay cameras on I, I shouldn't have to say hey let me see my people like i should it should just be a no like it should just be a, an automatic thing, okay? At least two, three minutes before class starts, you should be in the waiting room, can? Okay, let's, let's, let's like step up here. We kind of getting a little loosey gooseys, okay? So um, we have that. Let me just upload. Let me just double check that we're all here, okay? No. I don't have very many of them. I have like maybe eight of them now. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Still waiting on a couple of you guys to just finish. Okay. Cool. All right, let's move on. So obviously we are in the Hawaiian Renaissance section. Why? Because we wanted to make a parallel. Yeah. We learned about the Harlem Renaissance, right? And the results of of um African American um, soldiers in World War One fighting overseas for a country they felt prideful in, and then when they went overseas, they noticed how much nicer people were to their own Af um, black soldiers, whatever it was, and they noticed that there was a big discrepancy in America. Like, how come we're treated like that? So when they return right back to the continent, we're gonna call it the continent, right? They're like, um, we don't need that right? We should be treated better. And on top of that, we, we risk their lives for you guys, right? Wait a minute, right? Great migration of the South happened, right? And they got out of there. Thank goodness, right? Some of them stayed and thank goodness for that too, right? But, um, right, we covered um, of mice and men. We talked about how it's important that we are are really here for each other. And it's important for us to know each other's truths so that we can be a little bit kinder to one another yeah, and be more empathetic. 
So now we're at the point where we're going to just go back and anchor ourselves into this thing we call the universe, right, into our world, um, and, and look at what the Renaissance looked like over here. Okay, I don't know, maybe some of you guys have family members who were a part of the 19, late 1960s, early 70s um, Hawaiian Renaissance. Anybody know? No. Interesting. Okay. Maybe, maybe go and ask. Where did they take part in the marches? Did they take part in the protests and the civil disobedience um, of the bombing of Kaho'olawe? Right. I don't know. Would be good to know. Okay. So let's move on into uh, the next part of Canvas. Um, and before, no, I, yeah, we can, we're good. We're going to move on to Kekani, uh, Ke Ao Maoli Hawaii Ho. And what, it, what this is, is an essay by um, Larry Kimura, Larry Lindsay Kimura, right? So his last name, Lindsay, says that he's really from Waimea side. Yeah. Um, we're going to look at the sound of the Hawaiian Renaissance. And Go ahead and click on the link, okay? That should be at the top. Everybody good? Give me a thumbs up that you opened up the link. Okay, thank you. And we're gonna be doing a jigsaw. So um, I'm going to be creating four groups. You are only responsible for like the, the five to six pages that are that you are assigned, okay? So. What you're going to do is um, I'm going to call out the person who's going to be in charge of group one, two, three, and four. Um, the person in, that's in charge of that will do a copy and paste. So let me just share my screen so that you guys see where I'm at because I don't want you guys to be confused. So this thing needs to move. Okay. So right here, we have the jigsaw directions. You're going to read in groups, da 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 da. And then you're going to create five major talking points to present in your groups, right? You're gonna share it out. So below what I would like the one person from each group to do is to copy the group names and the five talking points, just this right here. You're gonna copy, everybody should be looking and then you're going to be pasting in here. Mm, I don't know what that was. Okay, so you're gonna have that. You're gonna write down which group number you're in and then the people that are in your group. Okay, and then once you're done reading, it should be a pretty quick read. Um, then in your group, you guys are going to be jotting down the five talking points and then we'll share out in 15 minutes. Okay, once you're done with that, um, the one person that uh, submits this will be able to see the rest of the um, discussion board. Okay, so anyway, um, let's call out the names for the people. So what we have here is group number one. Let's have Carson. Carson, you are in charge of that group. So make sure you copy and paste this into the chat. I'm not the chat, but into the text box. Group number two, let's have La'akea. You're going to be in charge of that. Group number three, we're going to have um, Zeke. You are in charge of group number three. And then group number four, where's Kai? Is Kai back? There you are, Kai. Okay, so Kai, you're going to copy and paste and then make sure that everybody's names is where they need to be. Okay, all right, you guys good? 15 minutes, okay, go for it. Apale, are you stuck? So the page numbers are according to the PDF, yeah. So if you look on the page, 
Where'd Kaylee go? She disappeared. Poof. She went to use the bathroom. Yeah. Oh. We got another Mimi Queen. Okay. I'll play as Princess Mimi. <laughs> okay, read. And then figure out what are the five most important things that you gotta mention. Thank you. Zeke, don't tell me you have to use the bathroom. No, um, I was wondering, it says yeah. for group three, pages yeah. 21 to 25. Yeah. Uh, why does it only go to 23? What? It's on the page. Yeah, I clicked on it and it only goes to 23. What? Really? That's weird. No, go on the page. Like on the actual page, it says 11. Oh, or right. Geez. Oh, yeah. My bad. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You just have a papa moment. You know, like a tata moment over there. That's okay, though. We good. We good. Why didn't you guys I got it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay. We just ekalamai you. It's all good. Yeah. You guys good? Kumu, what page do we read to? What number? To page, okay, we're we're reading from page one to page six, right? Because we're eleven through sixteen. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Eva, yeah. you're right. Okay. Thank Carson, you. Carson, you see on top of the page. Like it's the actual book. Okay, now I see it on the canvas. I see you it. guys. I like double checked three <laughs> times because I was I was like, okay, if I don't do this right, they're gonna be confused. And look, now you guys still confused. So I don't know. Like, get them. And it's okay if you don't speak Hawaiian. Oh my gosh. But everybody's on their own journey. Okay, we're good. Oh my gosh, you guys are the only group that did not ask me about the page numbers. We just figured that out. Oh. <laughs> you guys, when I was planning this out, I was like, okay, I'm not going to confuse them. I'm just going to use the page numbers that are on the page. And then I saw that the PDF pages only went up to 30 or 23. So did other students. Yeah. Sorry, you're not special. Other students were confused too. Anyway, okay. Find your five major talking points. Yeah. yeah.
I think one of the ta talking points should be about um, how the Manoa call, wait, was it the college? Yeah, that the enrollment was raising because of the UA, the Sunday Manoa singers. I put in, I just uh, took it directly from the text. I put UH Manoa has the longest consecutive record of Hawaiian language instruction in Hawaii. And okay, then later good. we can explain how the Hawaiian language enrollment increased from 1960 to 1970, something like that. Can you add in that like start number? What is the start number? It's really sad. 90. And then what, what did it grow to? What? 317. Right. Unreal. Six fifty-six or nineteen sixty-two is fifty-six. Yeah, nineteen sixty-two fifty-six. I wonder what it is today. Amazing. Oh, you guys. It's we need five of that. Five talking points. Yeah. Yeah. We have one. So far. Well, How much do you have? One talking points like because the Hawaiian language enrollment increase is one talking point but like could the uh oh you're not supposed to share anything with each other what what are you doing what are you talking about I don't know. I thought you were giving something to somebody. Uh, well, then. Oh. Okay. How's it going? You guys done? Um, it, yeah, we we're writing the talking points right wonderful, now. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. What talking points do you have up to this point? So far, we have one talking point, and it's about like the symbolism of a UFO. <laughs> okay. And then what else? Are you guys just sharing it in the chat? How are I, you guys? I. Mike. I'm just rereading it so I can like comprehend it a little bit more. Yeah, in case you have to like share out a little bit more. Okay. So like you can have the talking points and then just talk about a little bit more. So okay. Make okay. sure everybody shares out one thing, okay? At least one thing. So somebody's gonna have to share out more than one thing. You know, when I looked at this group, I was like, you know, there's a bunch of brains in this group. And then I got the question about the page number. And so I'm a little like rocked here. <laughs> Just joking. Okay, so how's it going? You guys done reading? I'm on page 14. Me too. I'm it, really sorry. <laughs> is that page 14 or is that page one? Just joking. Okay, so... Um, you guys have a really important job because you guys are the introduction, yeah. And without the introduction, then like the rest of the the rest of the essay is kind of just a bunch of songs and stuff. So, what? How many more minutes? Ooh, okay. If you guys can start grabbing those five talking points, that would be great because we're going to move on in like about three minutes.
And then let's make sure everybody shares out just at least one talking point, okay? What thirsty? What are you drinking? What happened? Went up your nose. You okay? Well, watch out, dangerous. Zeke, you better help him. He's trying to drink something else and it's going up his nose again. Oh, that's his fault, cool. I know. You know what he needs? He needs a sippy cup. No, I'm on mute. Oh, no, I'm not on mute. Yeah, you, you're not on mute. How come you're so thirsty? Because Mitch missed the lunch is so small and I eat it all. No, you know why? Because you're used to eating every single hour on the hour that baby is hungry. That's what. You're so used to eating snacks. Is this your first day on campus? Yes. Yeah, I bet tomorrow you're going to bring snacks, huh? I'm not coming uh -huh. tomorrow. Oh, really? Okay, you guys done with your five talking points? No, hurry up. Bro, we need two more, Kumi. Hurry up. All right. Which which um which group are you? Three. Mm. Three. We have some far Zeke. Um uh, hold on. Uh we have how long on all pool? Uh being performed nineteen seventy eight at the Tony Computer concert. Mm -hmm. Then we have Queen Lily Okalani's Will. Uh then we have Washington Place. Um basically the place where her will was going to be uh, put into action. And that's all I got so far. Can you, you talk about the medical concerns at all? No, go, go. Medical concerns? Yeah, oh, sheesh, I might have read over. Yeah, they all had like, problems or something. And then one of them wanted to like make some pad like a...
You're muted. Never mind. When I came back into the um, main room, you were like on my main, my huge screen that's above my computer. And it was just like your face, like right there. I was like, not that it's spooky. It was just like, wow, we're like face to face. Okay. How's it going? Are you ready? Okay. Zeke, you guys ready? Just share out what you have. Okay, so you can share out your screen if you want. Um, where is everybody else? Bathroom. Oh, there. Okay, so um, those of you guys who weren't in charge of submitting to the um, group, I was gonna call that a group, group chat. That's clearly not what that is, the discussion board. Um, you're good. If you didn't submit anything, just write down your group name and then hit the post button so that you can open up the discussion board so you can see everybody else's share out. Okay, so as they're sharing out, what I want you guys to do is either make a comment or um, ask a question. Okay, everybody good on that as they're sharing out? So you're gonna have to find like group number one first, okay? And um, you're gonna see that the other class um, did this already. So just focus on our class. Okay, very good. So we have um, a lot of chaos group. Okay, very good. And then Carson. So let's have group number one go first. Everybody should be on their group number one's post, um, ready to ask a question or write a comment. Everybody ready? Wait, um, Ms. Yes. yes. So you know how we can only see if we reply. So do we just like, just reply something? We just. Yeah, just write your group, um, group number and then hit oh, okay. the post. Yeah. Well, were we not supposed to uh, post our talking points? No, you, no, you have to. You're supposed to. But you I'm not to. a leader person, so I, I can't see everybody's thing. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Apole cannot be leader all the time. Okay. Part of being a good leader is knowing when to follow. Or not, just joking. Okay, are you ready? Group number one, go. Make sure you get ready to um, comment or write a question. That's you typing. This is you typing right there, yeah. Okay. Go for it. Okay, so I'll go first. Um, number one says that Hawaiian music was mainly to attract tourists and not to revive the Hawaiian language. So basically, the music that was made back then that was considered Hawaiian music, quote unquote, basically, it was to attract tourism. And it wasn't really about, you know, the Aina or what our ancestors did for us. It was just about tourism and trying to get people to buy things or whatever their goal was. So yeah, that's number one. Mm -hmm. Let's go, it should be rapid fire, rapid okay, fire guys. Thank you. Um, the whole, our second one was the Hawaiian language is an artifact of the past, according to the majority of people living in Hawaii. So like a lot of people just thought of it as like something that like, you know, artifacts or stuff from like of the olden days, you know what I mean? That you don't really use anymore. So they kind of just like left it in the past instead of bringing it with them. And I think, um, what Larry Kimura was trying to do is trying to get that mentality out of people's head so that it's not an artifact anymore. It's a present kind of thing. And so he did very well because, you know, people speak Hawaiian now. So, yeah. Maika'i, very good point. Eva, you can go. Okay. Um... Okay, so as more generations grew bigger and bigger, then the more popular Hawaiian music became because they tried to show it off their talents. Yeah, I don't know, you're kind of looking at me like, anyways. Um, no, I'm looking at Zeke and um, what's his, to is that Toby? Yeah, that's Toby. He wish he was in our class. Mm. Okay. Oh shoot, wait, sorry. 
Oh my gosh, I was looking at the wrong post. <laughs> I was looking, I was looking at the wrong post. I explained someone else's. Okay. Um yeah, so oh my gosh. I'm Bro, so sorry. grab your crystal. I'm so sorry. We've got to like clear the air or something. Anyway, the music that they made, the lyrics weren't more about the literal translation for people to understand, but it was more of each individual word to um express a deeper meaning and thought of an overall thing they were trying to convey. Thank you. Okay, the next one, um, it's not a talking point, but it's a question because I had a question. I'm so sorry, Ms. Kabatu. I couldn't think of anything, but when they were talking about how the music was mainly to attract tourists, I wanted to know like, when did it make the switch to start representing Hawaiian culture in its entirety again? Yeah, yeah. that is a good question. Um, I'm, I'm just looking at the timeline behind me. Um, I don't know because like when you look at when like um, when some of these songs were created, right? Not the Hawaiian Renaissance songs, right? But the earlier songs, right? Like Kaulana Napua, right? Um, Hawaii, um, Hawaii Aloha, like they're old songs. So what happened, right? The influence of Malahini coming in, right? What did it, what did it do? It commodified, right? It put a, a, a dollar to that music, right? And so when you see those stickers that say Hawaii is not for sale, hmm, right? Hmm, that's all I have to say about that. But also it was made for people who didn't understand the language as well. So if you notice, um, like, if you, have you ever gone to the airport and you're like, oh yeah, old like touristy music, right? That's actually like the old like Hawaiian, like, oh, that was, you know, cool back then. You know, when you get into the elevator and you're like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. right? My grandpa loves this, right? My grandma, whatever it is, right? but it's real like touristy airport elevator kind music. Well, that's what, what people expect when they come here, right? And so it's a real like, what do you call that? Ornamental side of Hawaii. Oh, if they only knew our washers and dryers are outside all resting, that our favorite family pet is a rat right? Um, the neighborhood dog is everybody's dog because they're not on a leash. You know, I mean, just, I mean, the truth of Hawaii is not. What oh, is just it? calling us out. Uh, just calling us out. It's like the, the com not the commercialized. No, not Waikiki, right? It's like the same thing when we look at pictures of Tahiti. We're like, we got to go to Tahiti. Well, guess what? We're only looking at the resort. Those bungalows, that's not Tahiti. What is Tahiti? It looks like where I live, right? No more even hot water in Tahiti. Anyway, thank you for taking me off a tangent. Thank you, appreciate that. Okay, who's next? Carson, you're gonna do the last one or? Yeah, you don't even have to speak Hawaiian, just you know, speak regular. So it said that men weren't interested in the Hawaiian music made because the Hawaiian men weren't because they knew that it was only that it was only made for the tourist attraction and it wasn't about you know Hawaiian culture at all. So men weren't they really didn't like Hawaiian music at the time. Yeah. Okay, who's next? Did you guys type something in? Okay, if you presented, you don't have to type for your own group, obviously. But if you didn't present, you should be typing in. You know what? Tell Toby I'm going to call Auntie Leo and I'm going to have him get scoldings from Auntie Leo. Where do we post that? You know where, um, I think, who, who posted that? Was that Laakea's post for your group? Uh, it's, oh, yeah. Yeah, you can write underneath the Laakea's post. 
Thank you for asking instead of just sitting there. Trinity, are you outside? Where are you? Are you at Waikoloa? You look like you're at Waikoloa. No. King Cam? I'm, um, sitting outside. Yeah. Of your hale? Oh, no. I'm in Kona. Kau. Kona. Oh, how lucky. Wait, like under my groups. Yeah. No, not under your groups, right? The group that posted. So group number one. If you look, La Akea. Right? No, no, no. Carson is group number one. La oh, Akea Carson, Carson. Group. Okay. I'm, put, I'm saying it wrong. Oh, that's Carson's LOL. LOL. Okay. Who's next? Us. Okay, so am I presenting all of them or can I go? Can I do the first one? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so we're doing the group two. Um, and the first talking point is that the UH Manoa had the longest consecutive record of Hawaiian language instruction in Hawaii, and they had a, a huge um, enrollment increase from 1962. It was 56 enrollments to 1974, which was 317 enrollments. And that was basically because um, the like ban or the, is it a ban? But they were called Sunday Manoa and they would, they were a band with, they would play music and they created music and they're gonna talk more about that, but that's basically what attracted the college to, for um, people to enroll and go to the Hawaiian language classes. Very good. Yeah, okay, so, uh, you know, a lot of people, a lot of the peoples in Hawaii were not proud to be Hawaiian, like, uh, yeah, they just weren't because I'm guessing because of like all the punishments that once we get in schools and stuff. And so like people didn't want to be Hawaiian anymore just because of the way they were brought up, I guess. But uh, so these two or three guys, wait, let me check their names, Robert and Roland Casimero and uh, Peter. Uh, they got together. Oh, yeah. And then there were two further, the uh, Sunday Manoa's music. And so they made an album called uh, Guava Jam. And everybody liked it. Uh, and it influenced a lot of the younger generations about uh, or like for Hawaiian music and stuff. Yeah. Very good. Anybody know who the Peter Moon Band is? Brothers Casimero. You guys are killing me. Oni Apole. Okay, what about... Um, they still play on the radio. You listen to Kappa. Yeah, and then my neighbor, if you pass by, super loud. Um, and then... Uh, I just told you where I live. Okay, and then... Um, who else? The sons of Mi'ihau, the sons of Makaha. You guys know? You guys know? Please tell me yes. Trinity is like Makaha sons. Makaha sons of Mi'ihau. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trinity is like, I don't know. I'm in the, I'm like in Kona. We're on vacation. We're great. So lucky. I'm going to go over there. Okay. We good? If not, if you don't know who these bands are, like, Look them up. I don't know them. I know. But maybe your papa does. Maybe your Grammy does. That's right. Okay. All right. Who's next? Um, is it the migrant? Like, okay. So um, number four was... There was like a like the entire thing was basically just like talking about music and different types of art and stuff, and I thought that just like showed like a really strong resemblance between the Harlem Renaissance and 
uh, the line in the sense, because like it was using cultural pieces to perpetuate the culture rather than just like uh, practice and stuff. Yeah, very good. So yeah, when you see these renaissance, when you hear of a renaissance happening, right, the rebirth or the regeneration of a people, right? There's usually a song, right? There's usually an anthem, right? There's usually something like that. Poetry, artwork, it all pops up, okay? Um, very cool. Okay, who's next? Thank you. Um, okay, and our last one is the earliest movement of the Hawaiian Renaissance can be seen in the unprecedented increase in Hawaiian language study at UH Manoa. And so in the nine, in 1962, there was only 56 enrollments and in 1974, there was 317. And that's like a really big increase in kind of like a short amount of time. And um, there's also development in the new kani of news, Hawaiian music. I don't know what that means. Yeah. Very good. So Mano only had 50, 56 people in 62. That's crazy. 1962, 56 people only, right? Now you can go to school from what? Punana Leo days all the way up to getting your PhD. Anybody planning on doing that? Getting our PhD or yeah, in the in on. like in the Hawaiian colleges like Kahakaula. Anybody? Um, maybe not a PhD, but I'd go to school. Masters. No. Depends on what you want to do. Very cool. Okay, who's next? Thank you. Oh, yes, Kai, you're, it's likely you're not going to live in Hawaii. Okay. Um, our group's next. And then we're group three. I can start off. Here. So in 1979, there was a concert called Kalani Kapila Concert. And Kalara no Pool was presented as a gift and was performed there. It was composed by a lady, I'm pretty sure, by the name of, so I started with an E. Ellen Pendergrass. Oh, yeah. Auntie Ellen Pendergrass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she composed it and it was just like one of the main focuses during that time. Because everyone was still sad of what happened. Right. Oh, she, she's in my turn to share out. All right, so the second talking point uh, is about Queen Lilio Kalani's will. Uh, so basically, she wished to uh, have a, like a little, not area, but a little, she's what's the name for it? I can't find a name for it. But yeah, a little area or whatever, building, whatnot, um, to be used as a place to teach Hawaiian music and uh the hawaiian language um and at first uh her she's i don't know who the heck it was i don't know the details but somebody that was helping her out with her will uh, asked like why you know why uh teach hawaiian language and hawaiian music because it's not a language of art or science and she stated that um in the future 50 years from now a person that can speak uh, Hawaiian would be looked upon uh, in curiosity. And so, yeah. So, also, oh, where I got my stuff is at 5%. Okay. I don't worry, I got it. I, I got it. Um, so the next point is about the place that she wanted uh, her will to uh, be at. And it was Washington Place. Washington Place was her home. And I think that was a very important piece to have because she gave something as precious as her own home to uh, the future generation. 
And uh, I think that's uh, very cool on her part. Oh, Jake, or you want to go, or you want to go? I was just going to add on to that. I was about to say that. It's where, like, she also got arrested, too, for during the overthrow of the Hawaiian Kingdom. Or, like, that house was established to perpetuate the Hawaiian language, music, and culture. And it was from Aliko Lani's vision. So, yeah. Okay. And then, like, I think it was the fourth point. And I was talking about, like, the medical condition because they were really concerned with that. Because, like, lots of the Ali'i, I guess, were getting ill. And, of course, med like, just in general, the whole medical field was not the top at its game yet. So everyone has struggled good with it but then David Kalakala was someone who was like more interested in it and he like knew the culture and like the language and he like focused on dance and like he did medicine too of the culture which kind of brought everything together and it kind of helped perpetuate the Hawaiian culture. Very good. <clears throat> Who's next? Last part yeah? yeah Blaise, I think. Where did Blaze go? Blaze, you're killing me softly. Okay. Sorry, I got the last point then. Um, last point is basically uh, they want to establish a foundation for perpetuation. Uh, Kershaw came out with that. Uh, she brought up that point. And I guess what they was really trying to accomplish is trying to, uh, I don't know, like revive the Hawaiian uh, culture. Um, mm -hmm either with uh, the Hawaiian music that we talked about in the earlier point or with uh, Lili Okalani's will. And so I guess all of that can connect to the single idea that um, perpetuation is key for the Hawaiian culture. Mahalo. It's important that, not that I say that, but that it comes from you guys. Okay. Um, very important. Thank you. Okay. Last group. Let's speed this up. So, some talking points was, it was, they're talking about the UFO, but it was kind of, I feel like, or well, I interpreted it as a symbolism for like foreigners coming because they were like so intrigued, but they were confused, but they welcomed it with open arms, but they didn't know like how destructive would be to like just welcome all these new people inside. And another one is a quote that I found to be interesting. Well, not really a quote, but they, they said this in the passage was, you can choose like to be a unique Hawaiian individual or you can just blend in with the rest of society and not like honor your Hawaiian culture. Yeah, that's a choice you're going to have to make on a daily basis, right? Like, do I blend in? Do I stand firm in who I am? Okay. All right. Point three. Okay, so um, in the section we read, there was also a part about how it's a Hawaiian job to practice the culture and not, not to let it go to waste. And another point was um, the man uh, wanted to incorporate Hawaiian in the school, which eventually happened in the 80s. Uh -huh. Okay, last point. Um, the last point is the use of our language and language and chant is important to who we are as Hawaiian people. So instead of the page thing, uh, this says that the use of our language and treasure is so delicate and subtle, yet so pivotal binds us to who we are as Hawaiian people. So I took it as like um, our language and our chants and our like the language binds us to who we are as Hawaiian people. Powerful, thank you. All right, so 
Um, I guess I'll take a commercial break right now and let you guys know that soon, I think it's in March, you guys are going to be registering for classes, yeah. So I'm not sure if you guys heard, but the English department worked extremely hard to make sure that um, we're shifting as a Lahui. Um, at this point, I think most of you guys know, um, because you have older brothers or sisters, is that we there was no Hawaiian Pacific literature course in at our school. So for 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 our school, that's a big deal, you guys. Okay, so next year, you guys are going to be the very first class, the very first class that has the opportunity to take the um, Hawaiian and Pacific literature courses. The course, sorry, it's a full year. Um, you can take that or you can choose the regular um, English 11 world literature course, okay? But both will um, suffice as far as your 11th grade English credit. Does so that make sense? for college, it counts? Yeah. <gasps> okay. It's going to count. So it's pretty, it's pretty um, like a chicken skin moment because what is that saying to you guys if Kamehameha Schools doesn't offer a Hawaiian Pacific literature course, right? Could you imagine if you told somebody, your uncle or whatever, your auntie, yeah, we don't have a Hawaiian or Pacific literature course at, at our school. Well, what would people say? Right? Wouldn't they ask you a question like, Zeke and Blaze, I don't care if I'm going to have to scold you guys through Zoom, okay? I'm going to pull out my auntie card and scold you guys. Stop it. Okay. Cut it out. All right. So what we have here, right, is an opportunity for you guys to further understand where your mo'olelo comes from and um, in the wider Pacific Ocean. So pretty cool. Okay. So I, I don't think all of you guys are going to be taking that course because some of you guys are already registered for AP courses, which is just fine. But for those of you guys who are further interested in Hawaiian Lit or Pacific Lit course, there's your opportunity for 11th grade and you guys are the very first class. So check it out when you register. Okay, questions on that? No, okay. So I'm gonna move you guys forward here. Um, I'm gonna share my screen, make sure you guys are side by side with your canvas and my canvas going on here. Okay, so as I refresh, everybody should have been responding. Okay, that's how I'm going to be grading you guys. So if everybody responded, then we should have a bunch of comments and things below. Very good. Okay, when I look at this, oh, okay. So make sure your, your response shows up, okay? All right, next, I need you guys to go in back into, I guess that's the sign up sheet. Okay, your sign up sheet for our period four. I'm gonna throw that back into the chat so that in case you close that down. Okay, so what I want you guys to do is when you guys go into your canvas and, oh yeah, okay. Um, what we have next is this, you guys are gonna do this during cohort B tomorrow. Okay, or you can do it tonight. Um, you're going to be, well, right now you're going to be choosing one of the um, historical figures from the past. So if you click on the, this right here, the Voices of Wisdom, what you have here is you have a book that has like basically a summary of what each person was known for. Okay, so when you go back into the sign up, you're going to write your name here and then the person you chose. First come, first serve. So let's go ahead and um, go ahead and sign up for that person. Okay. So what is that, right? So when you click here, Voices of Wisdom, what we have here is we have this book of famous people that actually made an impact during the 
Hawaiian Renaissance. And you're just gonna choose that one person okay, that you're going to um, highlight. So after you're, you choose somebody, like if you're into science, somebody should choose Isabella Iona Abbott. Why? Because she is called the Limu doctor. Yeah, she studied all kinds of seaweed. She's very famous. Okay, and she's also a Kanaka scholar, which is really cool. So anyway, um, what you have here is you're gonna be, after you're done reading the article on that one person, you're gonna record a one minute video, okay? That you guys are just gonna basically summarize provide explanations of how the person contributed to the Hawaiian Renaissance. Okay, and then make sure you post it into the canvas. Only one minute, why? Because as you guys know, when you guys have to post a video, um, it takes forever. Okay, so only one minute, cut yourself off at one minute. Can, okay. Did everybody sign up? Nobody. Okay, so go ahead and put your name in there and then whoever you choose first, that's yours. No overlapping people, please. Ooh, nice choice, Eva. The Limu doctor. Very cool. Okay, find somebody that's worth your time. Hopefully you guys do that tomorrow. Oh boy, class is ending. Okay, so go ahead and sign up for that. I'm gonna move you guys forward because I'm going over time again. Um, when the last thing you're gonna do is write your poetic response number four. Okay, so I go over these two um, terms as far as social justice and civil disobedience. You're gonna watch an Ed Puzzle video for that. It's only two minutes long. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna explore two links and take notes. One, basically a talk presentation and one song. You can choose between one of these at the top and one of these at the bottom. Everybody good on that? Okay. And then you're going to um, post your response poem underneath over here, okay? Alrighty, and then don't forget to add it to your collection of poems. Okay, any questions? You guys good? Raise your hand if you need extra credit. Oh, yay, 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 yay. I love playing extra, the extra credit game. Okay, tell me, okay, email me when you find this out. Okay, go ahead and write this number down in the chat. Okay, this number right here, 21,269, tell me what that represents. Okay, that's all. Okay, all right. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask me now. If not, I think you need a break before you go to your, I don't know what you have. Okay. Yes, Black Cow. Oh, our IXL. So since we have our meeting on Thursday, not Wednesday, is our IXL due on Friday or is it due tonight? No, it's due tomorrow, cohort B. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay, anybody else? No? Be here one to two, maybe three minutes before class, waiting in the waiting room. Okay, guys. Okay, we gotta shape up. Okay, anybody else? Tia, did you have a question? No. I look forward to write, reading your poems. If you need help, send them to me. I can give you guys some feedback real fast. Okay, be good. <laughs>